This is Sean's Corner, where all my ideas are anything but square. The year was 1985. While the majority of musical groups were experimenting with synthesizers, artificial drum sounds and studio production techniques, a little-known group called Radiohead was going against the grain for the modern, more natural sound. By February of 1993, the band was set to release their debut release, Pablo Honey. I first heard the song creep while listening to FM 96 on my grande on Thanksgiving night in 2010. The lyrics in particular really stuck out to me as being interesting and unlike anything I'd ever heard before. Things like, I'm a creep, I'm a weirdo, and what the hell am I doing here? After that, I heard a couple of more songs, including Fake Plastic Freeze and High and Dry, which were featured on their second album called The Bends, released in March of 1995, which is the subject of this segment. So without further ado, let's get into it and rate my favorite songs off the iconic album, The Bends. The first track on the album is Planet Telex. This is quite a neat tune, in my opinion. To my ear, the song is easy to groove to and has an interesting wavy sound to it. I found the lyrics to be obscure, but still interesting to listen to. Now to rate the drum roll, please. I, Sean Hogan, rate this song four out of five raspberries. The next song is the title track, The Bands. This one is really a rocking tune. I find the lyrics in this one quite notable. Such lines as, where do we go from here? The words are coming out all weird. Where are you now? Tom York has a very unique and creative way of arranging lyrics and words. The dynamics in the song are what make it rocking. It starts out quite wild and loud and switches into parts that are calmer and quieter. I would rate this song an amazing and astounding 5 out of 5 raspberries. Next on the list is the song Fake Plastic Trees, which is the fourth song on the record. My family is a big supporter of this particular song, as am I. This is probably my favorite song on the record. I enjoy watching the video in which Tom York is singing the song Fake Plastic Trees while riding in a shopping cart. Green plastic watering can For a fake Chinese rubber plant And a fake plastic girl The overall tone of this song is sad. The acoustic sound of the guitar makes the song sound delicate or fragile. Hit the drum roll, please. I give this song an astonishing seven out of five raspberries. It's just an incredible track. Last but not least, we have the song High and Dry. This is also an incredible tune. I really enjoy the drum beat in this song. It has a classic rock and roll sound to it. I really enjoyed the video of this song. In the video, the band performs the song while getting soaked with rain. So I guess you might say the band is anything but high and dry. I give this track a whopping 10 out of 5 raspberries. That's a lot of raspberries. In conclusion, The Benz was released in 1994 and continues to be influential because of its unique and creative lyrics. It's incredible dynamic range, well-produced accompanying music videos, and nostalgia. If you have an album you would like me to review, send a quick message to this email on the screen.
Well, blow me down. This segment is about a sailor man who is thrown to the finish because he eats his spinach. For all the youngsters in the crowd, who am I talking about? Why, it's Popeye the Sailor Man, of course. Two, two. My earliest memory of watching Popeye was back in 1988 on WNYB, Buffalo Superstation. I enjoyed watching the full hour of Popeye. Popeye is a funny character with hilarious voice acting and very clever one-liners. Well, all right, now that I'm into it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Got it. Poor Popeye was a good guy, but his enemy, Bluto, was always pushing his buttons and setting him off. When Popeye gets upset, he would say, That's all I can stand. I can't stand no more. In much the same way the milk keeps your teeth strong, spinach gives Popeye extra strength and bigger muscles. Why spinach, you ask? There was a real life scientific accident in which the iron content of spinach was greatly exaggerated. E.C. Seeger based Popeye's love of spinach off an inaccurate scientific measurement in 1870. Popeye uses his newfound strength to get revenge on Blue and felt him right now, yeah. Popeye was inspired by a real-life Polish sailor, Rocky Fiegel, that lived in the cartoonist hometown in Illinois. Rocky was well known as a barroom scrapper, and the cartoon really does look like the real life Rocky with a bald head, a real pipe, and a thin build. Olive oil is Popeye's wife, which Pluto has eyes for. He is constantly trying to steal her away from Popeye, of course. Olive oil never sees the difficulties that Pluto is giving Popeye and always tells him to calm down or have a sense of humor. How frustrating. Bluto is a big muscular bully that is always using trickery or force to get the best of Popeye. He's the opposite of Popeye, physically bigger, cruel, and pushy. Bluto and Popeye are always competing with each other, usually over the love olive oil. My favorite Popeye episode is called Cooking with Gags, in which Bluto is playing tricks on Popeye, mocking him by saying, April Fool! The best prank is when Bluto puts gasoline on some wood and Popeye lights it. Kaboom, boom, boom, boom. There was an explosion. To add insult to injury, Olive Oil was telling Popeye not to get upset. Popeye, where's your sense of humor? Can't you take a joke? She says. The episode ends by Popeye getting revenge on Bluto by blowing up an inflatable sea monster and chasing Bluto and Olive across the lake. Bluto gets totally terrified by Popeye's gag and jumps in the water to swim away. The inflatable sea monster bursts and blasts Bluto up to a tree. Olive oil starts laughing her head off and exclaims, There's no fool like an April fool. I'm tough to the finish because I eat my spinach. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. Toot toot. Well, blow me down. Science on Radio. I became interested in the radio in 1981. That year, my dad bought me my first portable radio. It was a realistic portable radio from Radio Shack. Down at the Radio Shack. On the main drag in Grimsby. It was a quality radio that lasted me for 20 years. It was the first one I ever owned, and I have been a fan ever since. Since then, I have taken an interest in taping content off the radio, listening, dubbing, searching for stations, and locking them. I have owned many different types of radios, including, let me think back, good doggy. I've never been a brain wrecker, but let me try. Okay, there were realistics of Patrolman SW60, Grundig 400s, a Texan 9012, Sony, JVC, Sanyo, 
and a Panasonic with single cassette tape without a reverse. Radio has always captivated me because it can transport you all over the world with stations from all countries of the globe. For example, in 1983, I found AFRTS in New York on the shortwave. I enjoyed listening to all of the instrumental music and news stories. Another one was The World of Radio with Glenn Hauser, which was a listener supported program. He would cover all kinds of journalism topics. And last but not least, there's the great 91.7 Giant FM, booming out 50,000 watts on FM, just a brilliant power. Speaking of 50,000 watts, this is the amount of power that the station broadcasts out at, enough to reach the entire Niagara region. The amount of wattage refers to the amount of area that a radio station can cover. In my experience, I have seen stations that broadcast as higher as 3 million watts. For example, WRNO from New Orleans, broadcasting classic rock sports. After Hurricane Katrina destroyed the transmitter, they came back with a 50 kilowatt signal broadcasting the good news outreach with religious content, including sermons and religious music. There are two bands of radio, AM and FM. AM stands for amplitude modulation, while FM stands for frequency modulation. AM is not stereo and FM is in stereo. I would call the AM sound inferior because it's thinner than what you would hear on FM bands. This makes it ideal for talk radio. On the other hand, FM is better suited for music because it's incomparable, sharp and crisp, like lettuce, you know. Radio is not a perfect medium. Unfortunately, there are some things that can disturb radio signals. For example, my sister Brenda often visits Dundas when she goes down into the valley Giant FM phases out. This is either because of interference from the geography of the area or because of the receiver in the car is too far away from the transmitter at the station. Some other things that might interfere with the signal are weather, clouds, building materials, cell phones, and traffic lights. With building materials, solid concrete walls might block the signal from getting in. To conclude, radio remains one of my favorite hobbies, there is always a plethora of information, music, sports, and news. All of my interests are covered in this medium, essentially. And best of all, it's free. <laughs>